I'm flying to Novosibirsk. The name of the city itself has the same root as Siberia, synonymous with endless expanses. In the winter, this is a harsh region with icy frosts and a wealth of snow, but the people who live here long ago learned how to conquer the cold. Novosibirsk is the youngest city in Russia to have a population of over a million. Originally, a small settlement founded in 1893 on the route of the Trans-Siberian Highway that was being constructed, in just 100 years it has transformed into a vast city with a population of a million and a half. The city now covers an area of over 500 square kilometers. Novosibirsk is a four-hour flight from Moscow, and it takes about two days by train to get here. In the winter, the temperature falls in these parts to minus 50 Celsius. No surprise then that the Siberians know better than most how to cope with the cold. For local hunters or for those who know the pleasure of getting some rest and relaxation in snowy forests, heating is an issue of crucial importance. The inhabitants of Novosibirsk are famed for their portable stoves that can provide heat in the harshest of frosts. Even those from sunnier, more southerly climes will feel themselves at home in a residence constructed by the Termofor company. That's because in one of these houses, the stove is king, and it's no simple stove. It's in this tent that a stove for the 21st century is being tested, and I've got a chance to take part in its testing. I've come in from minus 26 degrees Celsius and it feels like at least plus 35 in here. We can turn the temperature up even higher, but there's no point. The stove can improve comfort levels though. In addition, it turns thermal energy into electric energy. There's a cooking hob and you can use the electricity to maintain links with the outside world. It's incredible, the stove creates electricity. Not without pride, I can tell you that there's nothing else like this in the world. The makers note modestly, however, that they haven't invented anything new here. They've simply hooked a thermal electricity generator up to a slow-burning stove and given me a brief physics lesson. An electric current arises between two plates when one is heated by the stove and the other is cooled by a fan. In order for electrical appliances to work normally, there's a controller, which is a sort of stabilizer. It gives a stable voltage of 14 volts, and that can be transformed into 220 volts or 12 volts, which can be split with a divider that will provide the usual current used in the home and 12 volts. What's the maximum capacity of this stove? At this stage, it's 50 watts. 50 watts, that's not bad. We're still working on it to get the capacity up. But this is the first step. People from Termofor have got some other tricks up their sleeves. In order to design this stove, the firm's personnel travel to Mongolia to study the way of life and customs there. The result isn't just a stove for nomads, it's a work of art decorated with national ornamentations. Here's another multifunctional design, a summer kitchen. It's a whole complex that you can barbecue with, cook fish with, or smoke foods on. The inbuilt washer allows you to wash your crocker in hot water straight after eating. I also found out that the Siberians are stocking up the storehouses of their homeland. Apart from stoves which are intended for use at home or in banyas, we're producing stoves that you can use in extreme situations and even in disaster areas, say. Every state has warehouses where they store all the necessities needed for survival, foodstuffs, warm clothing, medicines, and the kind of solid fuel stoves that we make. And here is the pride of the inventors. This very stove is kept in the official state reserves, Russia's strategic storehouses. This is the special purpose Normal 2 stove. In the opinion of representatives of the Emergency Situations Ministry, this is the best device for heating temporary camps. The military are also interested. The construction and use of this stove is as simple and reliable as the Kalashnikov machine gun. 
How are these stoves made and from what? I'm off to the factory to find out. We know that the thinner the metal that the stove is made from, the better it heats, but that also means the faster its walls burn through. The inventors have found a solution to this problem, however. The Siberian stoves are made out of special steel with a high chrome content. Thanks to this material, the stoves, firstly, are longer lasting, and secondly, they're lighter. This advantage means the stove can be more compact and mobile. All of the components are made with high-tech equipment. Computer technology and the use of lasers are standard. Digital technology and qualified personnel earn their keep. Over the course of a month, 500 people manufacture about 8,000 stoves. Many of the engineers and designers used to work at an aircraft manufacturing enterprise. They take the building of stoves as seriously as building planes. The very careful control of every stage in production removes any chance of defects or flaws. In order to get a better idea of the production volumes here, I'm off to the warehouse. From here, these Siberian stoves make their way across Russia and beyond. As the economists say, demand gives birth to supply. So things are fairly busy here. For example, they're unloading normal stoves for the country's reserves at the moment. The huge range of stoves that Termofor produces can be viewed in its entirety at the company's exhibition hall. Of course, in the modern heating systems or a classic fireplace like this, it's hard to make out the famed Borzhuika stove of the days of old, not to mention a traditional Russian stove. Technical progress has undoubtedly influenced the appearance of these devices, but the essence and basic working principles remain unchanged. They still give off heat and they're still fueled by wood or coal. To ensure that you get exactly the kind of stove you need, you can also get consultations here, which is exactly what I did. How big is your house? It's average. Average is probably about 500 cubic meters. To heat that kind of house, there's the Datsent or Associate model. It's a model that's fired with solid fuels. These stoves bear the name of a famed Russian heating engineer, Professor Butakov. He was a specialist in the field of heat supply and ventilation. Every model has its own name, a student, engineer, associate, professor, and even academic. The greater the parameters of the stove, the greater the seniority of its title. Although getting on with a professor is just as easy as handling a student. Into this fire chamber we put wood or coal, or whatever else burns well, and we open up the ash box, which ensures intensive burning. It lets in the air. Yes, that's absolutely right. The hot air comes out of this convection aperture, very quickly heating your premises, your dacha or your country house. When the wood's already burning well, we hermetically seal it, closing the ash box, and the stove switches to its slow burning regime. As they say in Russia, simple as a banya. A Russian banya or sauna stove is in fact another story. As well as washing, people used to heal themselves in the banya, and children would be born there. It was even a favorite place for fortune telling. Are these stoves for the banya? Yes, we've got a very wide range of banya stoves. Superficially, they look the same. What's the difference, say, between this one and that one? Well, this one's a fairly recent design. It does what a banya stove's supposed to do. It gives you a really good steam. This stove is different in that it has two chambers. The water goes into the first chamber, where it boils and turns into a rich steam with drops of water. It then passes through a red-hot pipe to the second chamber. Here the steam is split up into molecules and released. This is the light steam that banya lovers really adore. You throw a scoop of water in there and at the other end you get a very light, dispersed, wonderful steam. Looking at computer-generated models and plans is all well and good, of course, but the real pleasure of a light steam can only really be experienced in a real banya. You won't understand it until you've tried it, as they say. So I'm heading off into the forest for a steam. Konstantin, Dima and Sveta want to show me a very unusual banya. While they're working on getting it ready, I've got the chance to relish the natural scenery. The Siberian tiger in winter has a special charm. Walking like this, deep in snow, you find yourself recalling childhood fairy tales. I'm about to reach the final point on our journey. I've been invited to take a steam in a banya, and it's a mobile banya, with the beautiful name of Mobiba. 
Mobile banyas are, in fact, an ancient invention. The ancient Greek historian Herodotus even wrote of a banya that the Scythians would carry with them. Back then, the nomads would cover a frame of poles with thick felt. In the 21st century, they use a material which neither burns nor sinks in water, to use a popular Russian phrase. It's highly resistant. As you can see, Dima and Sveta have already set up the banya, and now it just has to be heated. To be honest, I haven't done anything this outlandish in ages. I'll go and give them a hand. Well, it's a fairly spacious banya. There's enough room for everyone. I think that stoking up the fire is a man's job, though. That's right. Let's get started. In the design of the Morbiba, one of the main conditions was that it had to be compact. It weighs just 17 kilograms, and it fits into two small bags. The chimney breaks down into several pieces and fits into the stove's firebox. The assembly of the banya, including the tent, takes no more than 15 minutes. There, three minutes and the stove has been assembled. We just have to put it in the center relative to the exit. Yes, and pour water into the tank and get this place ready for the stones. Despite its size and the simplicity of its construction, this stove of stainless steel is very powerful. It needs little to fuel it and gives off an incredible amount of heat. While Dima goes to get some snow, which we'll use instead of water, I've been given the distinguished task of firing up the Mobiba stove with these hunting matches. The fire's happily flickering away in the stove, and Dima says the banya will be ready in 15 minutes. Let's see. Dima and Sveta assure me that they'll heat the banya up to 100 degrees Celsius. The main thing is, prior to using the banya, you have to heat up the stones. That means we'll get a good steam. Please. The banya's ready? Yes. Well, a very slight delay due to the frost half an hour instead of 15 minutes, but now I can test the famed Mobiba banya. Let's find out what it's like. In my opinion, another advantage with the Mobiba is the transparency of its walls. That allows you to take in the surrounding landscapes without even going outside, whether it be on the shores of a sea in a snowy forest or under a polar night sky. You're purifying your body and soul. To be honest, I'm stunned. It's about 90 degrees now, and all around there's taiga. It's a fantastic sensation, but the main thing is it's warm. It's a real Siberian banya. I've been dreaming about this all day. And of course, after a Siberian steam, you have to take a roll in the snow. That's the tradition. What a feeling. I can't describe it. I think you've seen it all for yourselves. And on that note, goodbye. Until we meet again, goodbye. Good steam to you all.